Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blacken, with my wife, Natalie Blacken, from our studios in Jerusalem. And today we have a very special Christian Zionist program where we're going to talk about the history of Christian Zionism, where we're going to look at some of the people very involved in the uh, Christian Zionist cause. And we've got video, we've got the Prime Minister, we've got a special interview we've done uh, with uh, Jan Wilhelm van der Hoven, Natalie. And uh, you're not going to want to miss any of this. So straight away, we're going to listen to what uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said at the very first Christian media summit in Jerusalem. And Natalie and myself were there. So have a listen to what he's got to say. Israel has no better friends. I mean that. No better friends in the world than the Christian communities around the world. And Israel is the one country in a, in a vast region where Christians not only survive, they thrive. That was amazing to see uh, the Prime Minister, Natalie. We were both there at the time speaking to uh, the Christian Zionists, speaking to Christian organizations from across the world. And uh, an absolutely historical event, really. And so today on the program, we want to explain a bit about Christian Zionism, uh, some of its origins, uh, some of the history. And uh, um, we want to first explain that the important thing for you to know is that uh, Christian Zionism is from the Bible, that it's, that it's uh, looking at the scriptures, what they say about the return of the Jewish people. And um, it's something very, very important. Why are so many people getting involved in this? Because it's something that is happening in front of our eyes. And basically, it's a theology that sees the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel in fulfillment of the scriptures. Uh, supporters of Christian Zionism believe that the existence of the Jewish state can and should be supported on theological grounds. Now, what's interesting is that uh, many Jewish historians say that Christian Zionism that it actually came before the Jewish Zionism, the Jewish... Um, movements to re for the return of the Jewish people to come back to Israel, that Christian Zionism preceded that. I mean, in reality... Was it, was it with Balfour? <clears throat> Are they putting it even before Balfour? Yeah, or? I mean, basically, it goes all the way back to the, the Christian Zionist movement, goes back to the Puritans and the Reformation and the uh, 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 Protestant Reformation. But uh, the interesting thing is, is that the Jewish people have always longed to go back to the nation of Israel, even in the diaspora when they uh, were out of the land of Israel. Of course, saying next year in Jerusalem at the Passover Seder. Yeah, and it's in every, every prayer that they are doing every day, uh, they are praying that. And for the meal, at the end of the meal, the uh, Birkat Amazon, they, they are praying for coming back and they are praying for the temple. But so it's, it's in their prayers. Now, sometimes it hasn't been like consciously saying now is the time, but it's been in the prayers all the time. Right. So it's been, it's been a, a movement amongst the Jewish people. But what hasn't happened is it's been a, a, a kind of political uh, movement with power. And I think that's what this is the real difference is that when Christian Zionism came in, it was involved with the pol politics of the time. Um, even up until now. And that changed it because it had some umph in it, some power and different, uh, and that was always the issue because it wasn't such an easy thing for the Jewish people to come back to the land uh, of Israel. Now, the expectations of a national return of the Jewish people to the home, their homeland was often called, before Christian Zionism, it was called in the church or in Christian circles, restorationism, the restoration of the Jewish people back to the land of Israel. And it was widely held amongst the Puritans. Uh, and of course, Oliver Cromwell was what is well known for uh, welcoming the Jewish back. people mm -hmm. back into the land of England. Now, the early Methodists uh, and Baptists, uh, Charles Spurgeon held similar views. Anglican minister Charles Simeon wrote in 1820, the Jews at large and the generality of Christians also believe that the dispersed of Israel will one day be restored to their own land. And they have a lot, they had even hymns, you know, beautiful hymns speaking about Zion. And it wasn't said like it would be 
like we, with the replacement theology, it was like, no, Zion will be against Zion. There were some beautiful hymns, but it just dwindled away, I would say. And so it's interesting. Well, with, with replacement theology changed it because they said that, the, that Israel was the church and Zion was part of the church or something. And so they changed everything. And so everybody's confused. But if you read the scriptures in their context, it all makes sense. And uh, a popular Baptist preacher, Charles Spurgeon, who many people know, uh, wrote in 1864, this is Spurgeon, this is not a, you know, a wild extremist, this is what he said, that there shall be a political restoration of the Jewish people to their own land. Because and he this could was Spurgeon. see, he could see. And, yeah, uh, Lord Shaftesbury, uh, who fought uh, against uh, slavery, is well known for that, uh, repeatedly lobbied Lord Palmerston for moves to stimulate the Jewish people back uh, for their return to uh, the land of Israel, primarily by the appointment of a British consul in Jerusalem in 1838. So this is, so we're seeing in modern Zionism in the 1800s that something is really happening. But this was happening a lot with the British people, because in France there was nothing, right. and in America there wasn't really thing. So a lot of the bulk that of this uh, Zionism, or as you say, Restorationism. That's it. Uh, it was really based in England, I mean, or in, in Britain. Right, in Britain. Which, was, which was because there were so many people praying. There were people praying, there were groups of prayer groups in London who were praying for the restoration of the nation of Israel. And uh, one of the things, one of the projects, big projects, was the Christ Church, the Anglican Church in uh, the old city of Jerusalem. It was founded in 1849. It was the first Protestant church in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the old city, because all the others were like or Catholic or Orthodox, but this was the first Protestant right. church in the old city. And right. modern Protestant church, because mm -hmm. there were some uh, older churches. And it was the result of 1,400 clergy and 15,000 members of the church writing to Lord Aberdeen in 1845. So you can imagine that. That's 15,000 people writing that, uh, that Christ Church should be uh, established. And then we move on to William Heckler, the Right Reverend William Heckler, who was, uh, he was an Anglican minister and he wrote uh, the restoration of the Jews to Palestine in 1896. Heckler was in Vienna when he was the chaplain of the British Embassy. Not many people know this. And he came upon a book in a book fair called The Jewish State by Theodore Herzl. Because of this book, uh, um, the Reverend Heckler was introduced to Herzl and worked alongside him to, uh, first of all, to introduce Herzl, not just to the Christian world, but to, as we said before, uh, to powers, to political powers, and I, uh, to the German monarchy, he introduced uh, Herzl. And uh, in August 1897, Herzl held the first Zionist con Congress in Basel and he invited the Reverend Heckler to the Congress to be a delegate. And he was the very first, uh, Herzl said, Christian Zionist. And that was in 1897. But there have been other, you know, famous Christian Zionists that, have been, uh, that the Jewish people talk about. People like Lieutenant Colonel John Henry Patterson, uh, Ord Wingate, who played major roles with the Haganah, which was the precursor uh, to the, the Israeli army. army. And, uh, and the other massive thing in Christian Zionism was the Balfour Declaration, which, which went through Parliament, uh, was a letter issued by the Foreign Office on the 2nd of November 1917, uh, saying that the Her Majesty's government, the British government, uh, following the decla is uh, declaring sympathy with the Jewish Zionist aspirations to recognize the establishment uh, in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. And that was Lord James Arthur of Balfour. So uh, absolutely amazing. And um, you know that Christchurch was where Jan Wilhelm was meeting with other Christians at um, the Christchurch where, you know, the original Christian Zionists had started. And then he was the founder of the uh, inter prestigious International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem. And let's go and hear what he's got to say. And we're very proud and excited today to welcome Jan Wilhelm van der Hoven. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming across. Nice and uh, bringing your wisdom, your experience, 
Uh, he's the director of the International Christian Zionist Center. You're a trailblazer for Christian Zion, modern Christian Zionism. And uh, he's a pioneer. He's originally from the Netherlands, and he's the founder of the International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, where he's worked for nearly two decades as its spokesman. He's the recipient of the prestigious Guardian of Jerusalem Award, which was presented by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for his ceaseless efforts for a united and undivided Jerusalem. He's uh, currently the director of the International Christian Zionist Center and the author of Babylon or Jerusalem. And he's been featured on CBN News and in Israel Today and Ynet and many other uh, news outlets you've been on and, and, and spoken know, to. You know, one of the people that really has made an impression on me when I, at the Billy Graham crusade, asked the Lord to be my master and later I read the report of Cory ten Boom, a fellow Dutch person who hit 18 Jews during the Second World War in her watchmaker shop. And Billy Graham later made a film about this amazing woman and family that prayed for the restoration of Israel even before Israel became a state. They knew right. that God would bring, and I say, after a terrible um, deep valley of bones and where Ezekiel 37 hears the Jewish people say, our hope is lost, we are cut off, which is exactly what happened with this Holocaust. But they opened up their uh, home, saved 18 Jews, but for that they were of course, brought themselves to the concentration camp and she alone came back alive. Her father died and her sister. And it so impressed me. I said, Lord, I have accepted you as my Lord, but let me be, like Cory ten Boom, a blessing to your people. And um, so at the London Bible College where I studied uh, theology, I already began to be part of a Middle East um, prayer group, but I knew one day I would be doing what God says. And I say this now to everybody who hears this. The Bible doesn't say, preachy, preachy at my people. And many Christians want to preach at the Jews. The Bible says, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. And because you, you, you pioneered the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. And you also pioneered the, the, the march. Uh, yeah. if, you, if you haven't been to the Feast of Tabernacles, there's a march which takes place every year, the annual march through Jerusalem, the streets where you walk and not just walk, but you proclaim solidarity with the people of Israel. It, Such an amazing it, uh, march. Martin, I tell you, they had first the army I'm here a long time already, 50 years in Israel, and serve the Lord with my love for him and for Israel. And I saw this march with tanks and the planes going over, and I said, Lord, in Chronicles it says that the Levites went in front of the army of Israel. So I asked the captain of the march, the military march, I said, can we march with you? And so the tradition developed that Christians from all over the world, I started and was the main founder of the Christian embassy, and we had thousands of people. In a way, we took over the march nearly. And the Israelis, they are standing by the thousands and in their balconies and at the streets, and they throw us kisses. And one of the things is on the march is they bring the flags of the nation. So uh, the people in Jerusalem don't just see a, a march, but they see different nations coming through, which is a, a great testimony for them. It, 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 the Chinese come with their silk banners, and, and the Americans, uh, I, I saw the Americans with a big banner, the Lord loves the gates of Zion, so do we, Christians from Minneapolis. So, and the, the Israelis see it, and the, they, the, the black from Papua New Guinea was there, beautiful parrot feathers, they come through and they say, they've learned in Hebrew to say, Anachnu, Ochavim, 
Israel. We love Israel. And the Israelis, they see that the Lord has an international body that comes to love them and says, this is your greatest hour. Now, one of the things you do when you bring groups, you've got uh, the groups that come for the Feast of Tabernacles, and uh, you've been doing that for many years. You also visited, and uh, this is a good question, I'm very interested about this, why you would visit Hebron? You know, there's uh, different uh, biblical cities we know, but why, why did you take a group to Hebron? And we're going to have a quick look at a video in a minute of your group visiting there, but why, why would you, obviously Jerusalem, very, very important, but why would you take a group to Hebron? The Lord has grafted us in, Martin, to Israel. The, the Bible says, Paul, you Gentiles who were outside the commonwealth of Israel have become nigh by the blood of the Messiah. So I'm a son, an eternal son of the God of Israel. And the Lord says that where I put my feet, I can help Israel. And many Christians don't understand that. Wow, and it's, it's am amazing because what you might not realize watching at home is that Hebron isn't such an easy city, oh. city to, uh, to visit. It's, uh, there's a lot of army presence there, and uh, although people can, and there's the Tomb of the Patriarchs, and there's a museum and lots of things to see. But uh, you must realize it's, not, it's a very difficult city uh, to visit. Now we're going to have a look at your tour. And I think you, uh, I'm not sure if you're speaking, but we're going to have a look at the tour. Okay. And we'll be right back after this. On behalf of the Hebron Fund, the Hebron Municipal Council and the Jewish community of Hebron, we give you this honorary, this uh, certificate of honorary citizenship in tribute to your dedication to Hebron's city of our fathers. Wow. Am Israel, 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 Am Absolutely amazing to visit Hebron, and if you do get the chance, do go there. This is, uh, by the way, this is. Um, an article that I found, Jan Willem, from the Colonial Times. It's actually Lord Shaftesbury's memorandum to Protestant yeah. uh, pastors and uh, leaders, yeah. and he did a whole memorandum because many people. He was people a great friend of Israel, and you know it's amazing because I was near the Westminster uh, Parliament buildings years ago when I was on a tour for Bible colleges, speaking in Bible colleges in England with a fellow Dutchman, and we were praying. We saw this old glory still uh, symbolized in these beautiful buildings. And I said, Lord, will you give England once more her hair of anointing back like you did to Samson? And we prayed, and I'll tell you why I say it now. And we felt such an anointing. And then we look and the road where I put my car was Little Sanctuary Road. And I thought, Lord, how amazing. Now, I heard a prophecy, and I said, Lord, this is you. That God said, you must pray for America under Donald Trump and let Brexit be protected. Because if these two, and I feel even now prophetically, God will hear my prayers and prayers of many others to give America and England again the chance just as they moved Nazism out of Europe together to do something big for Israel. I said, Lord, let, like Samson, 
did more in her in his last day. They let the anointing come back to England and let American England under somebody that will be as strong and definite as as Donald Trump in, in America, become your instrument for Israel. And we've just had the uh, embassy's one year anniversary. Exactly. And it's, it's a fulfillment of Isaiah 2, 3. Absolutely. The nation's coming up Absolutely. Uh, yeah. to the mountain of the Lord. And it's not uh, just for the, because a lot of you, people will say, well, is it just for the Jewish people to come up to Jerusalem? And it's not. It says, it specifically all says, the nations all the says. nations. Absolutely. And I, I think this is very important to reemphasize because even some Christians are a bit confused about this, but it does say very specifically to come up and these scriptures are not finished. They're not, uh, you know, we pile them in the book cabinet and hope they'll go away. But they are still today, aren't they? They're, that's why the, the, the nations are coming. And uh, it's such an exciting time, Tabernacles, absolutely. isn't it? You know, um, they're coming up and absolutely. they come to Ben-Gurion. And, and I feel that's the reason why the Lord used the Feast of Tabernacles to announce the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow, and it's amazing because um, um, one question I, I didn't get a chance to ask, but I want to ask is that, how was it when you first came? Because did you feel you are continuing history, Shaftesbury, those who, the, the Protestants who prayed for the restoration of it? So when you arrived in Israel, did you feel you're continuing history? How did you feel when you actually came here? It's more now. I, I should not say, but you should ask people, well, I, I met Mike Evans and others, and Ulf Ekman, and many of them said, Jan Wilm, when we heard you, the Lord used you for us to go this way of loving and supporting Israel. So it's not when I came, but I said, Lord, thank you that even if I die today, there will be many who take the torch of love for Israel because of their love for the king of Israel. And they will go on as I pray. And, you, you, and, and there's a continuation of fulfilling scriptures. It's not just uh, something, a fanciful thing. And some people think, you know, the, the interest, uh, the, the love for Israel, the love for the Jewish people, it's um, a vain thing, but it's not. It's something, it's scripture being fulfilled that we're here to comfort uh, comfort Zion to to be alongside them to stand with them. My first, it's maybe good to, say, my first wife who is now with the Lord and loved Israel, it was an Arab, and she's heard the Lord say, "You cannot love me and hate my people." She was brought up to hate and despise the Jews as an Arab. Then we met and we became one. Also in our love for the Jewish people, she allowed my children to serve in the Israeli army. My grandchildren are now serving in the Israeli army, so I'm so proud and thankful. Jesus did not come to bring me a tract about eternal life. He gave his life. God gave his son, and my children have been willing to go the whole way for Israel. So I can only say to people, go on your knees and ask the Lord, not what, oh, I want to, what he wants you to do. My wife prayed and wept seven days, nonstop, when she heard this message. And she said, Lord, what shall I do? I'm a millionaire. I'm the suggested businesswoman of the year in Holland. I served the top companies. And the Lord showed her, help the economy of my people. So I'm saying to everyone, go on your knees and find out. We don't need all to become preachers and intercessors. Ask God what you can do with your life, with your time, with your money. And you will be blessed when you do so. And they'll be fulfilling Genesis where it says, I will bless those exactly. who bless you. And uh, this is very important for you to know. Well, it's been great to have you, Jan Wilhelm, and bringing all your wisdom of years being here and uh, in the, the powerful revelations that you have about the importance of Christians and the importance of Christian Zionism, the importance of Christians serving the land of Israel. And we'll be right back after this. Shalom, dear friends, wonderful to be with you today. We are walking together as friends. And you know, like who was a friend of God? Abraham. 
He, why was he a friend of God? Because he listened to his voice and he carried on moving on towards to the place that God said to him. And so we learned Abraham is a friend of God. Now, I was looking at the name again in Hebrew and suddenly what did I discover in Isaiah 41 verse 8 is written that Abraham is my friend. So I say, hmm, my friend, okay, Haver is the name that we know very often. So I look in my Hebrew and oh, my gosh, it was not. It's written Abraham Ohavi. And Ohavi, it comes from the verb Ani Ohev, I love. So it comes from love. So suddenly, Abraham is not just a friend of God. He is a lover of God. And because he was a lover of God, he listened to him and he did what he said. And this is what God is asking to us, not just to be a friend or chaver. Chaver is more like, you know, a pal in one way. But Ohev is somebody who loves you, who will carry on moving with you, whatever. And you read even in, in James, in the New Testament, it's written to say, James say, Abraham, the friend of God, and he say exactly the name. In Hebrew, he's, he's used the name Ohavi, my friend, my lover. So let us remember, when we follow God, when we want to be a follower of Him, we are also a lover of Him. And we are learning Hebrew because there is so much treasure in that language. And it's not just for us, we said, it's also for the next generation. You see, Israel has learned. Now they speak the Hebrew language, is back into the daily life. And now it's for us as Christians to learn this language and read the Bible in Hebrew. Slowly, slowly, we are learning, but it's very important. And I will see you next week. Bye. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for this special Christian Zionist program. Fantastic, Natalie, to look at the work, amazing work of the people over the ages and to have uh, the privilege of having Jan Wilhelm van der Hoven in the studio. We love to receive your emails. You can email us at info at israelfirst.org. Visit the website www.israelfirst.org and remember with a program that looks at the land, the people and the language. Music